Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we, I mean, things are happening, you know. It's the Donald Trump era. I mean, I wonder how President Trump is doing today. Yeah. <laughs> I got smiles from my, my guests today. But anyway, folks, uh, we're living in some very serious times, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, hey, the bell is rung. Round one is here. We've got, we've got in all due respect, uh, the Republicans uh, uh, are now still debating uh, the uh, the President Obama. That's the issue to start with, to begin yeah, with. Yeah. And then I think the second round, uh, I think Donald Trump's going to get to the t in front of the table. And then it's going to be a Trump situation. They're going to start reacting. But I really think, in all due respect, uh, the issues are going to really be discussed uh, during this particular time frame. We've got a presidential election coming up. We've got issues uh, that, that, are, that are of concern, major concern, all over this country that I think will be on the table. And we've got enough candidates yeah. on both sides of the aisle, if, as far as I'm concerned. We're going to have a discussion. So in all due respect, get out and register to vote. Register the votes. Very, very important that you get involved and try to get some of this information that we're going to be sharing here on the Oregon Voters Digest. And doing that with me today are two of my favorite people who are going to probably be here with me as, as often as I possibly can get them on, there, on here. And I'm talking about Don Dupe. And you've seen this behind the badge in the River City. He's written this beautiful book about the police. And that is a major issue. It just so happened that the candidates didn't talk about police this time around, but it will definitely be, it will definitely come to the table. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will. Yeah. So again, I would say if you can't pick up a book like this, it's a real neat one, good one, really just a great one. Portland Police, too. That means we got access, okay? And then we got Teresa. I mean, I want to make, I want to make sure I do it right, right? Teresa. Mm -hmm. She's the edit. She edited the book. She did. She edited the book. I mean, Don and I could, <coughs> so she did, right? Yeah. She did a good. She did a good job too. Teresa, how you doing? I'm good. How are this you? This is a lovely wife, Teresa, Thank you. and you know, she says Fleming in here, but she's got to keep her professional name intact. We <laughs> want to make sure we do that too, because she she's got some other works in the in the making, mm -hmm. and she's she's going to be a writer, and that's going to be nice. That I, I'm going to be given the opportunity to know who she is. You know? Yes. Don's got the, all the rights, but I got some of the rights, if you will. Okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, welcome, folks. Welcome. Appreciate that I'm very much. I'm glad to be here, Bruce. Oh, this is fantastic. Why don't we do this before we kind of get in all this other stuff about the elections and this, that, and the other, and the Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. Give us an update, uh, Don, about Behind the Badge in River City. Just give us a quick brief about what the book is about, and then kind of like, then, from, then we'll go right into where we're going from here, and, and then we'll go from there. How's that? Behind the Badge in River City is a book about the Portland Police Department as it was in 1961 to 1967. And then as I became a detective in 1967, uh, the detective work that went on. But a big part, uh, the important part of the book is, is uh, the policeman that worked Albina in 1961 to 1967. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the time frame where the riots occurred. That's a time frame where uh, 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 the police had a lot of issues with, with changing their policies, mm -hmm. with uh, policies from uh, changing policies and changing their ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I was it started, I was the last Portland policeman that got a call box key. Wow, wow. They used to have call boxes stationed throughout the city <clears throat> and when you needed to write a report, you called it in on the telephone, but you had to go find one of these call right, boxes. Right. About six months or so after that, they started using a special phone number, and you could use any telephone booth, and you could stop at any phone booth, call this number, and get your uh, reports written. Mm. It's, it's about the progressing of communications. It's about the loss of some of the tools that we used, mm -hmm. uh, the, the carotid hold. Mm -hmm. I hate to use the word mm -hmm. choke hold because mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. It's a carotid hold. Mm -hmm. uh, when we stop using SAP gloves uh, and that, that time that period. That SAP glove, it, it was a leading yeah. glove, whatever. It was a lead weighted yeah, cup. Yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 right. It had uh, two ounces of lead in the mm -hmm. back of each, mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. of each one. Mm -hmm. and. 
Mm-hmm. You could use it uh, to backhand someone. No shooting. No shooting, no. No, <laughs> no, no. shooting. No, we didn't have a lot of firepower in those days, Bruce. We had six shooters. Mm-hmm. So we had six in the barrel and six in the gun and six to go, mm-hmm. and six packs to go. Mm-hmm. So we went to work with 12 rounds. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they got 14 in the clip. 14 more here, 14 more here, and probably a couple tucked away besides. And all of them had master's degrees, right? Everybody had their, yeah, were yeah, all, all, yeah. Where they all had, everybody yeah. had master's, right? Yeah, yeah. No, nobody had And you had to be... Oh, a, I, just, you, I, I thought... I, I master's thought, degrees, and you had to be at least 5 foot 10. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yeah. But that's a good point, though, though yeah. to, to raise up at this point in time, especially when you were there. Yeah. Uh, the fact that there wasn't that many shootings, if you will, oh. and the fact that um, you didn't necessarily have to have a degree. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and the person looked like a deterrent because that because because police work is deterrent. Yes, right, right. Like yes. a peace officer. They're like a peace yeah. officer, you know. Yeah. You have a uniform because it's Blue. a deterrent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. you have to be a certain way because when you when you, when a person mm-hmm. sees you, mm-hmm. they automatically understands that hey, look, uh, I've got to do something right. Fair? Yeah. Something mm-hmm. Like that. Okay. The important part of this book is it shows when you drive down Williams Avenue today, you see a lot of vacant property. When you drive down uh, Martin Luther King, you see a lot of vacant property. Mm -hmm. All that property was running businesses. Uh, A lot of it was crime-ridden businesses. But that whole era, that whole business, that whole community is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what the book is about, Mm -hmm. what used to be there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a good point you make because even today, you know, there's a gentrification era right now in that area. And you can see all the high rises going up, no yeah. consideration for parking, yeah. Yeah. no consideration for homes and family and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And normally that tends to draw, if you will, an element yeah. too yeah. In, mm-hmm. in that kind of an environment aspect of it. And uh, no one's doing anything about it. You know, you, mm-hmm. we've got elected officials in all due respect who are basically representing the people. But the fact mm-hmm. of the matter is we got a whole different air in terms of how yeah. they respond to things. Mm-hmm. We got young planners, we got young people, if you yes. will that are planners, and those are the people that pretty well say, okay, fine, this is what's going to happen within the, as far as the futures are concerned and whatever. And, no. you know, these are not the same, i.e., they, they were the, the young people, if you will, going through and getting a degree, talking about no. family. I mean, we're you know, I'm not trying to knock anything, but, you know, we're right into heavy gaze, you know, yeah. that LBGT thing, situation. We're environmentalists. We're riding bicycles and things of that yeah. nature, but you still have a bunch of families. We got seniors, if you mm-hmm. will. We got a bunch of seniors, but I.e. lacking trees. You want, you want to say something? I think the problem with what's happening in North and Northeast is that so many of the older homeowners feel pushed out because mm-hmm. people are go- coming in. People from California are coming in and other places and buying up property and jacking up the rent. Yeah. So it's really changing the whole social climate mm-hmm. of that area. And um, it's really sad to see that kind of social splintering kind of going on. But. A lot of what went away mm-hmm. should have gone away okay. because there was so much crime in those days, in the 60s. Uh, there were so many businesses that were operated mm-hmm. on a criminal basis or they didn't care what happened, one of the two. Uh, I can tell you four or five different places that were put out of business eventually by the Oregon Liquor Control Commission mm-hmm. because they just couldn't run a business mm-hmm. you know, without violating the liquor laws, mm-hmm. the nuisance laws. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that criminal activity is now gone, and thank goodness for it. Let, let, me, let me throw some out on the table. You know, we've always talked about the word eat, right? Everyone has to eat, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Were, were jobs plentiful during that particular time? Were people working? Everybody, everybody, I think, that wanted to work in the 60s was able to work. I probably get some, uh, some, some flack about that, but yeah. I, I, don't think, I don't think that 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 was a big issue. Everybody that really wanted to work was able to work. But you know, historically yeah. speaking, yes. it, it was a very segregated kind of a situation yeah. because, you know what I'm saying? And there were was, certainly job opportunities in the criminal market. I imagine you know, there was a lot. There you, was a lot if, of availability. If you get away with it, yeah. That's right. <laughs> if you wanted to be a prostitute, there mm-hmm. was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to be a heroin dealer, mm-hmm. there was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You know, there were a lot of customers. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to be a purse snatcher, there was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that criminal activity that is now no longer there mm-hmm. is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I think also thing. what Don's what Don's referencing is the article that we're writing. Okay. Um, and it's actually. Um, 
the content of that article is really not in, in this book, but mm -hmm. we're writing an article, it's a response article, okay. to the Black and Blue Report by Leanne Serbulo and Karen Gibson. And they wrote a wonderful report that's very accurate, but there's probably about 35 to 40% of it that's mm -hmm. not accurate because they're making a lot of really huge generalizations about law enforcement during the 60s. and Don read the report and he was very impressed by certain aspects of it, but he also saw some of the oversimplifications that they had in it. Um, and so we're writing a, a response essay to that. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what he's riffing on right now. He's talking about those and, issues. And I think that's a good point too, because even I, you know, had a little concern about this whole issue with the possum incident yeah. aspect mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Yeah. They really didn't understand what really went on. Yeah. And sometimes people use this as a as a way of, of a justification mm -hmm. of doing the, or ignoring some of the things that you're doing or right. saying in the book aspect of it. So that's I think that's gonna really be of some benefit, if you will, to well, go we, back and correct the history. Yeah. We are including some some uh, information that the original authors were not privy to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, insider information from the police department, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. specifically about the possums mm -hmm. and about uh, the crowded procedure. hold. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, those things were not available to these people mm -hmm. or they didn't research it far mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, a little bit about revisionist history too. Mm -hmm. So we are correcting some of the things just to bring it up to yeah. this is a really the way it was. I think they did the best they could, but they weren't um, able to get certain information, probably from the Portland Archives and Records. I don't anticipate that they got any um, exposure to the police personnel files. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, Don was a person, you know, he was a police officer during this time. He was patrolling Albina from 61 to 67, so he has firsthand knowledge of police procedure mm -hmm. and police relations between white police officers and black citizens in Albina, and it's very different. His experience, his perspective and viewpoint is very different from what Sir Bulo and Gibson portray in the Black mm -hmm. and Blue Report. They make a lot of um, generalizations mm -hmm. about the integrity of white police officers. They lump them all in to a certain group of basically um, racist thugs, mm -hmm. you, you know, who were, who and that's simply not the way it is because, I mean, Don and I have talked, um, there was a lot of social work that went on by white police officers. Um, but there are certain um, aspects of police procedure that we're clarifying in this report, and it's yeah. about 25 pages so far. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a really interesting response essay. We've talked to the Portland or to the um, Oregon Historical Society, and they may use it. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they do, but if they don't, it will be published somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a really good response essay. And it's not an attack on their report because about half of their report is right on. Mm -hmm. You know, when they talk about redlining, when they talk about disinvestment in Albania, Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely true, but there's a lot of things that they claim in that report that are not factual. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Well, you're yeah, good. And I might add, uh, again, going back to the possum incident aspect, it just so happened I was publisher owner of the Portland Observer at that yeah. time, and we took the charge, Gloria Fish and, and the staff, we basically took the lead role to try to sort of take it along, if you yeah. will, because, because we were able, we were responding to the majority <laughs> community too, yeah. to try to educate them. Yeah. So we weren't just a bunch of people just trying to rip things up or tear things apart or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very, very important. That was yeah. transition. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, the media that was existing at that point in time took it the other way. So yeah. I appreciate what you're doing. So wh where is that Where is that report going to be and when, when, when are we going to see it? We've got about another week of working on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a real perfectionist when it okay. comes to citations and when it comes to details. Don wishes it had been done two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little more it's, impatient. It's an academic piece. Okay. It has to be okay. academically. Okay. Okay. It's, it's partially academic yeah. and it's partially a personal reflection okay. because it is a response essay from someone who worked in the field you know, from a personal expert, and that's Don. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's good because it shows the human side okay. of white police officers okay. who cared about public safety, mm -hmm. who cared about the black residents in Albina, mm -hmm. the working people, mm -hmm. the working families that worked at the Sens Dairy, and there was a bakery on Albina, or where was the bakery? It was a large bakery on mm -hmm. Fremont and Williams. Fremont and Williams Avenue. Fremont and Vancouver. Fremont and Vancouver, mm -hmm. right. And so there were a lot of other businesses besides um, mm -hmm. the After Hours Clubs. Yeah, and yeah, the mom yeah. and pop yeah. grocery store. Right, right, the right. Good right. They were there, they were there, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you, you're not denying the fact that, they, that, that, that we had a lot of 
problems and not denying you know, the and, fact that the and city and police were involved, if you will, yeah. in a lot of those right. criminal elements. Yeah, yeah. there were some selling bad drugs and things of that cops. nature. Yeah, absolutely. Some bad cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always say that even in the course of that, ten percent, yeah. you know, yeah. something. <laughs> the city <laughs> absolutely allowed a red light district. They really, yeah. really. They, they absolutely did. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. the mayor and uh, the chief of police. And uh, Captain Jim Purcell Jr., who was a captain at North Precinct, mm -hmm. they maintained this red light district, mm -hmm. this gambling district. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as long as everything was kept there, mm -hmm. it was okay. In the black community. In the black community, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that sort of accepted culture. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about today? <laughs> what, about your, what about today? I mean, how, how do you see it today? If, if I were to ask you, what's your feeling about today? You know, you, see, you, hear, you hear all this stuff about the shootings and this, that, and the other, and it's still crime. Well, you we know, still have drugs. You know, now we got marijuana involved at the table. I think uh, I'm astounded at the at the number of policemen that are caught doing really stupid shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, shooting people when they shouldn't be, beating mm -hmm. up people, mm -hmm. jumping on people. I, it's a good thing I think that everybody's got a camera now, mm -hmm. because that kind of nonsense needs to be exposed. Mm -hmm. Those kind of cops. I don't know how they ever got on the police department. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they ever got past the shrink mm -hmm. yeah but there are too many of them out there mm -hmm. and <clears throat> fortunately they're being exposed by John Q a citizen with a mm -hmm. video camera yeah. you know and so this is now being shown for the first time ever Bruce mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what the police actually do yeah they get away with a lot of stuff there's yeah. a lot of good cops and no doubt about that there's a lot of them that slip through and yeah, they're, they're the ones that are they're the ones that are, are causing problems for the good police. Mm -hmm. The people like Michael Slager <coughs> in South Carolina, mm -hmm. you know, a cold-blooded killer. The, uh, the 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 university cop killed the black oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, that's just supposedly and, dragged and stuff. And, and then yeah. he was found to have lied. I mean, those kinds of cops yeah. give good cops a really bad yeah, name. Yeah. But it was interesting that the when the when the other cops came on came. Yeah there on the scene initially they were supporting him that he was being dragged yeah. and then all of a sudden they said no way so maybe that's right. an improvement there yeah. to a certain degree yeah, yeah so the, the video proved when they it. realized yeah. that there was yes. videotape yes. on all yes yes and yeah. he knew that i mean he was carrying a camera he yeah. you know it, that whole situation was bizarre i don't yeah. think he was that man was just not even smart enough to be a police officer. But we still have an element out there, even from a legal standpoint, that yeah. will still defend someone, even yeah. though you got the video camera, right. yeah. right. showing you exactly what happened, right. yeah. saying, well, no, that you just this, this, that, and the other, yeah. you know what I mean? But that, that's just part of the trade on that other end yeah. of the aspect of it. Yeah. But you know, again, think about um, uh, some of the old days and some what really worked and whatever. The first person that came to mind during my time, because I got here in, I got here in 69, up in that area, but I can still remember the Harry Jacksons of the world and the yeah. Warrens mm -hmm. and the Warrens. And the reason why it worked so well, they lived here. Yeah. They grew up here and they yep. knew everybody, yeah. if you will. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Harry never had to have anybody riding with him because he knew all the kids because sure. he knew all the parents and vice versa. Sure. But under today's criteria, you know, and then Harry at the time didn't actually have a degree going into in that particular profession. He did as time went on. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, uh, you were able to right out of high school. I mean, they had career days, yeah. and people sure. were wanting, if you will, to get on the force. It was a job, but it was it was kind of a pretty easy job because you knew everybody. You know, you, yeah. as yeah. you get through going through training, you know what I mean. It, the key was about communication. That's the key to me. You don't need a college degree to be a policeman. Right, right, right. You need common sense. Yes. And if you don't have a common sense, a degree isn't going to make any difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, a better educated person is a better educated yeah, policeman. Right, right. But if you don't have any common sense, mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a Ph.D., mm -hmm. you're not yeah. going to be a good policeman. Yeah. You think we'll ever get back to that kind of a philosophy of going to, you know, put, putting common sense as a, as a priority in terms I of... I hope so, but, you I know, so, it, yeah. it seems like with Portland, there's such a focus now on getting police officers who are college educated, and they're so... We don't have enough police officers as it is. We're under-policed in the city of Portland because it's so difficult to be... Um, to pass the test. Yeah, to pass the test yeah. and to be trained and to get into an, an, an academy. And a lot of um, a lot of officers, I've talked to a couple of officers in Beaverton uh -huh. and Hillsborough, and there's some a certain amount of contempt for the Portland Police Bureau because it's so difficult to be accepted mm -hmm. um, as a recruit, you mm -hmm. know, and it's just... It always has been, though, Bruce. Yeah. It has been that way. It always has been. They want, a, they want an empty slate. They mm -hmm. want a clean slate. Yeah, when they I, do. When I took the test, it was like... 
100 or 150 guys in this auditorium all taking mm -hmm. the same test. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a test for the black kids. Wasn't a test for the Mexicans. Wasn't a test for the Indians. It was a test for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They all took the same test. Mm -hmm. Three of us passed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And one of us became a policeman. Wow. Wow. So it's always been tough. It always, it I was always lucky. Mm, wow. I was never that smart. Wow. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> but then you but then when you think about the crop of folks that did pass. Yeah. Now you got another issue. And then a lot yeah. of times people will say, well, look, I just want to maintain it just the way it is. Mm -hmm. I have some sense of control. Yeah. Fair, yeah. You got know I me? Mean? Yeah. And then, and then you start thinking about the mindset and how we got into the point where all of a sudden the police is the mayor. You know, the police runs the city. Police run everything. And they're not. They're employees. Yeah. They are employees. And then we've, we've gotten away from the employee aspect of it. And it's not good for them either. Yeah. See what I mean? Because they're assuming that responsibility, even to this day. You know, I'm, I mean, I, I, I thought it was a good idea to, I, uh, I'm thinking about the, um, the uh, what I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the the union aspect of it. The yeah. guys in charge of the union, I think Daryl Turner, who happens to be a black American, <laughs> black police officer. You know what I mean? But my point, I can't get to the guy. I mean, I, I mean, I can remember when I had uh, one of the, uh, uh, let me see, one of the stampeders, Stan, Stan, that he's a former Marine, yeah. and I had him here at least once a month. <clears throat> And he was always talking about police work, things of that nature, which I thought was good. Mm -hmm. Very outspoken kind of a guy, you know. But the yeah. fact of the matter is, uh, he, he was he was he said what was on his mind. Yeah. And that was good because you had access to that, right. and 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 the like. And he was always willing to go through, if you will, the the, the, the department. But unfortunately, today that this culture today is that, you know, they, they're so they don't understand that you got to get out here and talk to the people who hired you. <laughs> I think a lot of Portland police officers are afraid to talk because they're afraid if it's on film, what if something changes and what if it comes back to haunt me? So they don't want to go on film. Yeah, but the thing about it is this is that they're supposed to be going by guidelines. There's a certain policy. I mean, as you say, common sense. Mm -hmm. Once you read the thing in the book, you know what the policy is. I mean, yeah. what, what else is there, is, there, is there to be afraid of? Yeah. I just want you following the guidelines. That's all. Yeah. I mean, that's where we are now. What, what, anything you can say about that, Don? Sometimes what common sense sometimes common sense outweighs policy. Mm -hmm. And it did on the street because policemen have always protected themselves from the administration in one way or the other. They thought okay. it was nonsense. Okay. You know. Well, why didn't they change it and put it in the policy? I don't know. why. They, well, eventually they did change, but it took a long time. I, I'm thinking particularly of the fact that, that we could only carry a six-shooter with factory-loaded ammunition. Mm -hmm. So we were under gun as you know, compared to what the people on the street had, mm -hmm. and we weren't allowed to use you know, 357 magnums. Mm -hmm. We weren't allowed to use automatic pistols. Mm -hmm. and we could only have six rounds, mm -hmm. and then six more to go. Mm -hmm. Now, eventually, they did change that. Yeah, eventually, they, eventually, they changed that. So at least the guys on the street are at least. As, as well armed uh, as, as the thugs. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly like all semi-automatic pistols because I think they're dangerous mm -hmm. to the officer because they jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't think they jam, there's there's a YouTube video on how to unjam a Glock. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I want to hear. There was mm -hmm. a Portland police officer yeah. here in yeah. Portland yeah. who whose Glock jammed and it, I think it, it exploded blew up, blew in his face. In his hand, yeah. there in his hand, and he was injured yeah. for life, and he ended up getting yeah. a huge settlement because this Glock basically exploded. But revolvers don't, yeah. don't jam. That's right. always been my. That's always that's been my rationale yeah. behind that piece. I'd go back to revolvers, but. Mm -hmm. They'd never let you do that. Oh, well, we've only got six <laughs> rounds. We need 14. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, let's go back to your point about uh, uh, a lot of times they don't want to talk because, you know, well, as long as you respect, you're protecting your eats. Okay? Right. You're protecting your job right. and the way <clears> aspect yeah. of it. And, um, and so we've gotten in this culture aspect of it. It's a them against, uh, you know, oh, yeah. them against us or something mm -hmm. of that nature. And now we got to have this union thing to protect us. Yeah. You know, that will speak up for us. We don't have to worry about the attorney. I mean, uh, the judge is going to always basically go with us, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to go that way. We need to go just the opposite, if you will. I mean, one, they need to feel comfortable about doing their work. Yeah. And kind of doing their work. I'm doing my work. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't need two weeks after if I do something, if I accidentally shoot somebody or shoot somebody or whatever. If I follow the guidelines, what do I need to get off for two or three months for? But they still get condemned in the press and they get condemned by the well, media. That's what I'm saying. And you know, condemned in the court of public opinion. And the other problem that I see a lot is 
most people just don't understand police procedure mm -hmm. or police training. And so it's easy to vilify a police officer and to demonize a police officer as being some kind of cold-blooded well, who, killer. Whose responsibility is it to, 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 to do just the opposite, to educate people? Should it not um, be the elected mayor, if you will? Or, yeah, it should or the be. City and, council and, and, folks? and I think that there should be programs, education programs for civilians just to understand simple things like it's against the law to resist arrest. Mm -hmm. Even if you've done nothing wrong, it's against mm -hmm. the law to resist mm -hmm. arrest. My ex husband was stopped back in the 80s. You know, by four police officers, he, he was a white man with guns drawn, you know, put your arm, put your hands up, and he did. He matched the description of another man wearing denim mm -hmm. with blonde hair and a receding hairline, and he stopped, and he, I mean, he could, if he had resisted arrest, he might have ended up dead. Mm -hmm. But there, I think that the Portland Police Department or the local media here in Portland should do things to educate the public about certain rules that most of us take for granted, which is don't resist arrest. Even if the cop is doing something wrong, yeah, don't but that, resist arrest. But should that not go through the mayor? I mean, the people yes. who represent us, yes. they're employees. They're just trying yes. to do their job. Yeah. You know but they mean? don't want to because if they do, then they're going to be described as, you know, um, turncoats for the cops or whatever. You know, they're on the side of the police, you know, and, and it, it's unpopular. Yeah, but, it's I'm unpopular. but my point is that I'm, I'm electing those folks to represent me. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I want someone yeah. that's going to be a leader, if you will. You yeah. know my point? Yeah. And just follow the rules, if you will, because we've got to get to a point that, that uh, these employees are doing the job because... We're we're in, a, we're in a serious situation at this point in time. Yeah, you know, we got there's all, with all the shootings, if you will, yeah. and all due respect to blacks. I mean, these young folks. We got these young folks coming up. They're not being educated. Our yeah. education system, in yeah. all due respect, sucks, if yes, you will. Yes, it does. We got to really work on <coughs> getting that together. Yeah. But in that interim, we're just sending people to the pen, right? To the institution, yeah. right. and then they have to get out. Where do they go? Right. Where do they work? Once right. they get this on their on their records and whatever, they can't even get a job. Or a they come out of jail. Or they, wind to live. Up, they come out of jail, <clears throat> and they wind, <clears throat> Excuse me. They wind up in a homeless shelter. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, so we need we need leadership. Mm -hmm. We need leadership. Mm -hmm. we, we you know, and and that's why I sort of come back when we started out the deal talking about the whole issue of of Donald Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, right up front with it, 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 there's this guy. I mean, he's totally unorthodox, you know what I'm saying? He's not even paying attention to, to the rules and regs uh, as to running for office, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, you, he's not following oil. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm glad he's there. Because all the, like he said, everybody was reading the scripts. Yeah. Everybody was reading their paper, their notes. He was just right there, mm -hmm. common sense, mm -hmm. just plain old common sense. Yeah. And the media was wrecked. They didn't know what to do. But now they know what to do. Yeah. 26 million viewers, and they say, oh, wow, I can... I can raise the price of the ads over here, yeah. over here. And now CNN is sort of like prepping them up. They, yeah. They're going to probably break the record because all those folks are going to go. And Trump is saying, hey, they're going to come with me. If I had, had it not been for me, they were, it had about 2,000 viewers. He's right. I wouldn't have looked at it yeah. <laughs> because I've, I read, you know, I've read enough about this piece, but you can just go on and Google out the script. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's really a sad note right now. Yeah. But, yeah. but we got some really concerns, and I wanted to make sure that um, – uh, that folks know that we're going to have to talk about this whole issue of crime and police. Yeah. We, we got to get we got to get things together because it's very important. And like I said, folks, rest assured, we didn't talk about it this first round. The first round is still the president of the United States is still running Obama against whatever that. that but that's I think after this first round, I think we're going to get back into maybe some of these mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say, though, that um, nationally we're experiencing this really weird situation with law enforcement doing all these instances of, of police officers doing these horrible things. Yeah. But I just also want to say that P the Portland Police Bureau is one of the most transparent oh, yeah. police bureaus yeah. in the nation. We have one of the best police departments in the nation, and I think people sometimes forget that. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to say that. I agree. Yeah. I think that the policy needs to, more, needs to be more open. Mm -hmm. People need to understand what the policy is. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Mm -hmm. The policy needs to be pretty transparent, mm -hmm. and more than it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think too many citizens, and you see this on YouTube a lot, too many people really think they have the right to argue with a cop who's asking them to get out of the car or say, well, I didn't do anything wrong, to basically resist, and they really don't. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good idea. You can, you can, if if something has 
been done that was improper or illegal, you can deal with that later in a court of law. But when you're when you're up against an armed police officer who's on edge anyway, because he's worried about someone shooting him, and it's been happening, it's really the best and smartest thing is really to just comply. But like you said, when we start out, we say, hey, you see, they, 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 they go through a training situation. Mm -hmm. The public has to go through a training situation. Sure. And yeah. if you take the education system out of it, well, how do you how do, how are these yeah. people going to recognize? We got smartphones yeah. now, and mm -hmm. people are just all they're they 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 products of their exposure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And if they haven't been exposed to what's yeah. right, you know what I mean. It's in a very negative way, and as far as the the smartphones and stuff yeah. like that is concerned, you know what I'm saying. Okay, look, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back with this discussion. Maybe we might we might talk a little bit about the, the elections and things of that nature, Planned Parenthood and the like. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Here we go again. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and um, I think we got a very exciting show today. We we started off talking about something that will be d being talked about, the whole issue of police and community across the board, okay? So we've done that. Now we're going to get in the second half hour, and we're going to just try to get into some of the election stuff and whatever. But before I do this, is that um, we've got Teresa here, and she's going kind of like getting into another venture of possibly maybe authoring a book, if you will getting into the big time. What are, you, what are you going to be doing? Well, J.D. Chandler and I are co-authoring a book through the History Press, which is located in South Carolina. And it's, uh, J.D. has published three previous books through the History Press, and they're all, he's a crime historian, and he has a, a website called Slabtown Chronicle, which is a wonderful website devoted to the history of Portland crime. Mm -hmm. And so um, he's got three books that he published, um, Murder and Mayhem, um, the Hidden History of Portland and uh, Portland on the Take. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've got longer subtitles. And this fourth book um, is going to be co authored with uh, me. And it's going to be called Mayor Baker's Portland Sex Scandal and Forgotten Murder in the Prohibition Era. Mm. And it's really fun and really exciting. And we're going to be focusing on the prohibition, which we were able to find some documents and some of the old police personnel files mm -hmm. to prove that prohibition activity was happening out of the old police precinct, mm -hmm. the old headquarters building in the 30s. Um, they were, they were That's bootlegging. That's the El Capone era. Type yes. For those and the young folks. It there. was happening in Portland, just like in New York and Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's going to be available in February of 2016. And there's a little video that Jade made, um, which is on his um, Patreon account. Okay. Um, and it's just going to be really exciting. I'm so excited to do this. And this will be available high. high. It, there's going to be a reading at Powell's. JD is an established crime writer here in mm -hmm. Portland, and mm -hmm. when he writes a book, there's always a reading at Powell's, mm -hmm. so we're going to be doing a reading at Powell's, mm -hmm. and there will be other readings, probably at the St. John's Bookseller mm -hmm. and a couple of other places, so okay. it's going to be really exciting. So it's another sort of historical kind mm -hmm. of a situation historical, that we yeah. should know, right? Again, that's very yeah. important. To, yeah. you, you know, in order to go anywhere, you got to know where you've been, right, mm -hmm. before. The old police headquarters at 209 yes. Southwest Oak Street yes, right. was the distribution center wow. for all the illegal booze that came from yeah. Canada wow. mm -hmm. to, to the basement of headquarters mm -hmm. and was there distributed mm -hmm. by the police department's old little distribution system really? right. into the various houses of I mean, it was the police department. Then. It was the police department's mm -hmm. operation. Yeah. And it was lots and lots of money involved. Now, yeah. Somebody had a little action going on. But action. that was acceptable. That was hundreds acceptable. and hundreds yeah. of bottles, thousands of bottles of, of illegal bootleg liquor mm -hmm. were coming into that um, wow. old mm -hmm. police headquarters. Wow. And the book also will go into um, uh, details about the mis the disappearance of Anna Schrader. She was uh, mm -hmm. a gadfly for the Portland police, I guess you call it a gadfly. She was a um. critic of the Portland police, and she had had an affair with a man named William Bruning in 19 
1920 from 1921 to 1929 which resulted in him being fired mm -hmm. after she went to the Oregonian and um, she wound up missing in 1946 and JD and I believe that she may be the torso um, that was found floating in the Willamette River mm. um, April 12th of 1946 mm. Mm. so that's mm. also part of the book it's good. pretty, well, pretty gonna, exciting we're going to look forward to that piece that's going to be a good deal yes, I take it you're going to come in and give us a little review yes. here True. I appreciate that very much Teresa. <laughs> now let's talk about some of the things uh, that are currently happening right now we are very familiar with the presidential race and I would encourage you to I mean, look at the tube and read the paper or whatever but mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting it's very important that we do this now especially yeah. this time around the other thing is that um, there were other things that were happening as a result of that. You've heard the term um, uh, "Black Lives Matter." Yes. yes. That piece. Uh, there was a. Uh, it, it was a response to Michael Brown a year ago back in Ferguson, Ferguson, Missouri. That that whole incident. Right. Again, it, it's it's on the table aspect of it, and it's an organized effort around the country here locally in Portland, Bethel AME Church, uh, led by um, well the, the church. They had a kind of a, a gathering there. And a uh, moment of silent thing that I went, I attended the, the service at that point. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the person who was basically leading the charge of, in this area, the young lady by the name of T Teresa Redford, you might have known her. Yes, she I ran for her. the county. Yeah, she, she's been, she's been, a, that's a tough job. You know, yeah. it's an unpaid job, if you will. Yeah. And uh, naturally, she doesn't get the kind of recognition that, that, as far as I'm concerned, is deserving. And naturally, it's kind of an anti uh, police thing and vice versa, you know, it may, but in all due respect, you need to understand what's going on. She does have a grasp of some of these young folks, and that's a very important piece. A lot of folks are not communicating these folks. Nat naturally, our education system isn't doing it, yeah. Yeah. and so maybe that's a good way, and, and hopefully police will, will understand that we need to start thinking about the whole issue of community policing, and let's, let's talk about yeah. engaging, you know, yeah. and as far as I'm concerned, sit down and talk with her. In fact, I'd be more than glad to have uh, maybe turn in her to sit on this uh, right here, side by side, and we'll talk about the issue. Sure. You know I mean, because he is the lead guy, and, and we want to get this thing resolved as much as possible. But anyway, they did that piece, and that's all around the corner. Then you got Bernie Sanders, who's in town today. Yes. He's in mm -hmm. town today, and, and uh, there was some, uh, I guess that was in Seattle, they had a little situation where this whole, the, this whole group, if you will, Black Lives Matters, uh, there was this confrontation supposedly where two young ladies went up at, at the at the stand and took the mic from Bernie. Well, that that really wasn't the way it happened. They went to Bernie and told him that basically, in so many words, we're not getting any any press at all. We want people to know that Black Lives Matters, and so they right. went up there and and anyway they they made the point. So we're not trying to create a, a, a there's not no there's no need to create a a separation. We got to kind of get together and solve yeah. these problems. And we got young people out there. That, are, that should be given the opportunity to, i.e., to be heard. And we need to understand, yeah, it, especially the old folks, us. Yeah. We got they, to understand They should be heard. On. Black lives do matter, and yes. they should be heard. They shouldn't have to yes. hitchhike on someone else's exactly. uh, uh, publicity right. in order to get their own publicity. Exactly. Because that, their issue is important. Exactly. It's important, but they're competing with the presidential election exactly. right now. And exactly. so... You know, I know they're having a tough time right. getting, right. Uh, getting a, a press read, right. press right. Yeah. attention. Right. Exactly. But uh, their their work is important. Right. Yeah. Their right. work right. is important. I noticed the president of the NAACP was on national news today, and you know, I think Meet the Press or one of those ads, mm -hmm. and also let's see, the Meet the Press and uh, Congressman Lewis, a very well respected uh, representative from I think it was Atlanta, mm -hmm. right in that, that area. He was on, and he was supporting this whole effort about uh, Black Lives Matter yeah. and the youth, because yeah. you know, he was a youth, youthful person when he was attacked you know, yeah, yeah. on the bridge, you know, yeah. tell me whatever. But yeah, anyway, that's a, that was a that was a that was a very interesting piece. So he's getting involved, and I would hope that uh, uh, folks from the black community, especially el el elderly folks or whatever, get involved, reach out because these are these are just not just odd individuals. They're cousins. They're their nephews. They're I mean, you know, we, we've got yeah. a small community. If anything can happen in a positive way, we can do it here. Yeah. We yeah. don't have the, the issues in Chicago and things of yeah. that nature. But yeah. the fact of it, it still reflects here, too. Sure. You know, it doesn't make that difference. And then I guess that, that, that was one. The other one was Planned Parenthood. Well, let's throw that on the table. Yeah. That, that was a big <coughs> issue aspect of it. I mean, I don't know how you feel. In fact, I'll start off with you, T. What do you, how do you feel about it before I give you my Well, my you know, I, my I'm, take. I'm not really that well informed about what they do. Okay. All I know is I saw the video a week ago of the woman being interviewed by the two people right. and you know I'm not a scientific kind of person um, it's, it's hard for me to listen to people talking about 
fetuses that might be 16 to 20 weeks, that's mm -hmm. four to five months, mm -hmm. being aborted and used for scientific research, it's very hard for me to hear that and not be repelled by it. Um, I'm not against abortion. I hate the idea of abortion, but I'm not against it mm -hmm. because in cases of murder or cases of rape and incest, abortion should be an option. You don't want a 12-year-old girl who's been gang raped to be forced to give birth to a child that she can't raise and will be, you know, um, vilified, you know, as a as a product of rape. Um, but yeah, I saw that video. It was, it's very um, uncomfortable to mm -hmm. see people talking about fetuses that are 16 and 20 weeks in mm -hmm. along being aborted um, and then to hear the money-making aspect mm -hmm. of it. Whether or not they're making a, a large profit or not, it's still very um, It's difficult for me to assimilate because it's just so... Uh, it's just really hard for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of abortion, but unfortunately, in many instances, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just an impossible topic for me to get my head around. Mm -hmm. so. It's a it's an extension of what we do wrong. Mm -hmm. It's part of the scientific idea that we have to kill something to study it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they do it with insects. You, you walk by up here at PSU, yeah, they've got yeah. this wonderful display case of small insects and butterflies. They've all got a pin stuck right through the middle mm -hmm, of them. Mm -hmm. Now, we've killed this in order to study it. And they do the same in uh, water, insects in the water. We go in there, we collect these insects, and we kill them. We put them in vials of alcohol and watch them die because we're killing them to study it. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be acceptable. And I go to Planned Parenthood, we're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to kill this baby mm -hmm. and then to yeah. study it. Yeah. So the, a the, human being. The, yeah, they're human yeah. beings. And, when I, and, they're, and they're bugs and they're insects and yeah. they're human beings. But they're all alive. And the whole idea that we have to kill something to study it is nonsense, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, it's one of the things that I intend to go forward about. In, in the fall with PSU and their tactics, but Planned Parenthood just brings it to the fore. Mm -hmm. We gotta kill them and we're gonna study them. Mm -hmm. We're gonna mm -hmm. cut them up, yeah. mm -hmm. we're gonna study them. Mm -hmm. nah. I think one of the issues with Planned Parenthood also is, and I, I mean, I saw the video <coughs> and the pro, you know, Planned Parenthood is something that I benefited from as a teenager. I'm gonna be 50. Mm -hmm. I had two IUDs that would have cost me hundreds of dollars and I got them for free. Mm -hmm. And it helped me not get pregnant as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And in my 20s, my daughter's 23. She was able to get uh, one or two IUDs from Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. So they're doing wonderful yeah. work. Yeah. I support them so much in that regard. The, the issue with fetal tissue for studying for science is it's problematic and I mean I saw the video and I watched the woman ask the woman who was being videotaped um, you know do you um, have fetal tissue that is 16 to 20 weeks that's four and five months along you know uh, fetuses start to kick at four months native, that's a physical looking person right it's and person. Native Americans believe um, if you believe in God, but Native Americans believe that ensoulment, when a soul comes into the fetus, mm -hmm. occurs at four months. Mm -hmm. And that's when the baby starts to kick. Mm -hmm. So we've got people who are performing late stage abortions on four and five month old fetuses. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's so offensive. It really is. Well, you know, when, when again, this is, a, this is a major issue because uh, when you start thinking about our leadership, you know what yeah. I mean? And when that when that came out, and the first thing I, I thank God for body cams again. Yeah. yeah. Thank God for body cam because they were able to get those visuals. Because I really, had we not had the visuals, uh, what, yeah. what are you going to say? But yeah. the masses got to the visual. But the, but again, this I was thinking from a leadership. The first thing that I thought about when I saw those 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 videos, I said, well, gee whiz, uh, you know, in all due respect, the leader's going to take the lead of this. One. I would have expected, in all due respect, that uh, President Obama would have just basically had a press conference and say, hey, at this point in time, we're going to defund this deal. We're going to stop all fundings, and we'll go back to the table and whatever we have to do and come yeah. back if yeah. necessary. Yeah. But, the, but the, the whole idea of the health of a, of a woman, this, that, and the other, fine, keep that. You know, we want, we, that's a serious situation. So they got, but the idea, you stop that funding on the abortion piece. Sure. And then I would hope that the, right next to him would be uh, Planned Parenthood. That, would have been, that, that chairman or whomever say, well, from this day forward, we're not going to have anything to do with abortion issues aspect of it. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Until this thing is discussed. And then all of a sudden, then it's a major discussion, i.e. put together by a star committee uh, by the president, if you will, of very responsible folks, and then saying, boom, now what we're going to do, we're going to get it out the private sector, mm -hmm. and we're going to put it in the, in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. We're going to educate our young folks. We've got to educate our young folks. The whole idea of aborting a human being, is, and that's it's ridiculous. I mean, I, it was really, and then, and then another thought came to me was that, uh, the fact that uh, here we got folks that are sitting there drinking wine. Uh, you know, I wonder what, what about that kid? Do they recommend them to parent, parent, parenthood for abortion if yeah. something happened? And I hate to put it this way, but I'm going to be straight because the president was elected. I, I voted for the guy for the first time around. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if, he, if his, his daughter, did, does his daughter get, did his daughters get recommended to go to Planned Parenthood? I no. I don't think so. I don't think so. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so the bottom line is that we, we need to understand that. It's, it's a very, very serious matter. And I would hope that he would kind of like maybe go back to that table on this issue and get this thing settled once and for all. Take Planned Parent, take the abortion issue mm -hmm. out of Planned Parenthood. Because many of the organizations, it bothered me about the NAACP, the Urban League, and many other organizations not just black organizations. Mm -hmm. And then the other question I was asked, they were always making the point about uh, the fact that there were more black black young ladies aborted than anyone else. Yeah. Right. And that's why they went into those neighborhoods. And I asked the question, how many? How many were aborted? Because many in all many in the community are kinda of constantly asking, where are the young yeah. men? You got my am I yeah. going? Where 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 where's our civilization? Yeah. So yeah. so it it's a very it, it hits me pretty it hit me pretty hard and a lot of other folks. So that needs to be settled in across the board. I mean, just yeah. a just a life. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've seen these folks in the past about these anti-abortionist aspect of it, and you see all that, and the picture was fan, very, very negative. Yeah. But boy, I tell you, it put them right at the front of the line with me on mm -hmm. this piece yeah. aspect of it, and a lot of other people. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Get involved. We got to do something about it. I think what needs to really be addressed is when and where are late stage abortions happening? Yes. Yes. Because there are premature births there are babies that are born at six months and they live wow. and so aborting a five or a six month old fetus I, I can't I can't approve of that you know it's 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 morally wrong and it's not political I mean I realize we're right political, political. Yeah. that's the other thing I want to make sure we get across the table I've always maintained it's a women's right you know it's yeah. woman she, she has to understand and address the issues of her yeah. body yeah. you understand know what I'm yeah. saying we male we got a whole different ball game but I would think they would be outrageous but they're playing the old game of making it political yeah. about yeah. Republicans against right. the Democrat right. like the Republicans are quote uh, pro abortionists Right. And the Democrats are on the other side of the deal, yeah. and I, I don't. So, so we need to get this thing out of politics and yeah. get to the yeah, seriousness of it. And hopefully, that will be part of the agenda the, if, on the next if round. It's, if it's going to be in politics, right. then it needs to be done by the leaders. I think that one of the problems with the President Obama yes. is not doing. Yes. I think that he's not doing some of these things he should be doing yes, right. because he's coasting. Yes. He's on the yeah. downhill. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. on a yeah. downhill that's slide. Right. That's right. I'm going to be out of that's here right. in the fall. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's and that's the end. I don't have to worry about yeah. it anymore. Yeah. So I don't have to stick my yeah. neck out. Right. Right. But he should be in there about law enforcement. He should be in there telling people you can't shoot everybody. You mm -hmm. can't abort everybody. Yep. Yep. We need to relook some of these things. But he's not doing that. But as you know, it's Coasting. black. It's a black and white thing too. It's a black and white. That, that's why. Yeah. See, that's why on the front end. Yeah. That's why. Thank goodness for Trump. Yeah. <laughs> see, okay. see, the next round, the presidents around, they're going to be t discussing those issues that you're talking about. Yeah. You got me. Yeah. And then hopefully this black and white issue thing will be addressed again yeah. on the other. Thing. Like, for instance, this, you know, Black Lives Matters and things of yeah. that yeah. nature. That was a very serious thing. The criminal justice system, the incarceration. Mm -hmm. We got to discuss about these yeah. areas about yeah. America. Yeah. And so, yeah. okay. Good point. We, ha we have made some progress. Oh yeah, with yeah. with the marijuana issue. Oh yeah. You know he's doing. Some, President Obama's doing something about uh, pardoning a lot of these people. Yeah. And thank goodness they're finally yeah. doing that yeah. because that was a failed policy, mm -hmm. failed war that yes. put more people in jail, yeah. dis destroyed the black kids that are on the street mm -hmm. corners mm -hmm. selling pot. They're basically mm -hmm. they're just entrepreneurs. Oh, hey, hey, These little entrepreneurs wind up in prison. Yeah. That's right. It's about eating. Yeah, that's right. They don't grow it in the yeah, neighborhood. Right. No. Yeah. You can't grow it. You can't it, grow it. It's imported. It's imported. It comes that's in. Right. It's not exported. Yeah, that's right. It's imported. I mean, it comes 
comes in. You yeah. got know I me? Mean? Yeah. And then and then it gets distributed. But now that it's going to be on every corner. So yeah. now it's going to be on every corner. Yeah. Put put people out of work. So what are they going to do now? What what are we going now? Yeah. <laughs> See, but anyway, that's another issue there. That hopefully it'll, it'll put at the table because people yeah. are trying to concern about what to do. Yeah. And we got a lot of seniors now. You know, you got the baby boomers that are there, yeah. and they're, 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 they're concerned about crime. They're concerned about drugs because during that day there was wine. That's you know, right. It was a little wine, you know, a little shot of booze or this, that, and the other. But now this drug thing is, is kind of interesting trying to figure out, well, now, what is it going to do? What what impact is it going to have on our education system? Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? What What's happening about that piece? Got me? So, mm -hmm. uh, so, then, so where are we now? Anything else that we got? We, have we, we, we've, been, we've been touching about a lot of stuff over here. What about local? We got the... We got the local. Um, we got the local races. We got well, our dear friend Fred Stewart is running. Fred Stewart's running and, for yeah, the, 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 city commissioner. He's yeah. City commissioner now, and says sometimes I, he sort of resembles the local uh, Donald Trump, uh, yeah. Donald Trump <laughs> Fred. <laughs> but but he's he's very exciting, and in all due respect, he's kind of like a to the point kind of a guy. You know, yeah. sometimes he spent a little bit more time in some areas that he shouldn't be, but. But the fact of the matter is, uh, he, he's a, he's a good-hearted kind of a guy. Fred's great. He, he's a he's yeah. a good guy, and, and it takes a it takes a Fred type, i.e. the Donald Trump type routine, yeah. especially now to get ourselves back together, because yeah. hopefully we can we can deal with the issue of police and mm -hmm. things of that nature. And I don't know, Donna. I mean, you and I have been talking. We we may have to run for office ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, mean, you, I did that once. You did that once. <laughs> I did that. Yeah, once, I did yeah. that several times. You know what yeah. I mean. And I might make the other thing too. But about Donald Trump, they're constantly the, the media is kind of like leaning out like he's a buffoon or this, that, and the other, and he's parading this, that, and the other. The fact of the matter is, in this country, you can run for office. Right. Yeah. If they want to change the rules and the regs for that, that's what yeah. they should do. But yeah. as far as I'm concerned, he's running for office. Yeah. Okay. And and if the other folks talking about this, but no, no. Tell me what what our issues are. Yeah. And tell me the solution to these issues. You mm -hmm. got me, like the immigration issues, which yeah. is this. Everybody's still scrutinizing it around. He put it on table. You're right he put, about him. He's the only one off script. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> off script. And yeah, I want yeah. him to continue being yeah. off script yeah. because yeah. I tell you, because these other candidates are having, to, are being forced, if you will, to really talk. Uh, hopefully, maybe, maybe at one point they might think, throw those scripts away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throw those scripts away. In fact, no, no podiums. No, no nothing. Yeah. No diocese there where they can put all that, put mm -hmm. all their answers, and then on the, on the top. Just, just standing up there and then going from one to one. What, what do you think about this? And I, uh, what do you think yeah. about that? Uh, I mean, I don't yeah. think that. What you think they'll take us, uh, take us uh, serious about this, Don? A lot of, uh, a lot of the candidates aren't comfortable with that format. Huh? They, they, a lot of candidates are not comfortable with that format. Well, they we need, don't need them. They need to stand behind. No, the we don't need them. They yeah, need right. to have that as No, we don't need. This them. is what I was supposed to say. Yeah, we don't right. need. I don't want right. to offend my handler. Is that what it is? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's change the yeah. policy. You and I, Don, we're going to run. We're going to yeah. change. Well, that. I did. That'll be part of the platform. You yeah. got my point? No, I did. No, no diocese anymore. Yeah. You got me? If you if you're an American, born American, if you got some ideas, what we'll do is that you come in and you make the application. Identify the yeah. platform issues and you sign it. Mm -hmm. You sign the contract, and then it's, then you get it discussed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then if you win, guess what? That's right. You got to stick to that. Call. It's a matter of counting when you get to whatever yeah. representation, how many votes you got, mm -hmm. and if it goes to the blah blah blah. But if you sit there and do nothing, the next round, guess what? You're out, right? Mm -hmm. Because we got the deal. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. When very, I ran for cool. sheriff of Multnomah County in 2006, I was pretty pointed about what my platform was. I interviewed be. you here. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I interviewed you here. You just didn't and, have enough uh, money, Don. I didn't have enough money. <laughs> you, got, you got money, Don. You got to have that money. <laughs> I only had a few hundred dollars. Yeah, you look like Donald Trump, but, but you didn't a, have he, the money. He, I, that's right. You got a lot of votes. I did. Oh, yeah, I know. 33,000? 30,000. So you did good. Yeah. You did good. You did yeah. good. Thank goodness to the Oregon Voters Digest and, and yeah. PCM. And Willamette Week still, through their support, and with uh, Bernie Justo, and then yeah. he ended up getting ousted. Yep, yep. Well, well Lama Week is always so insightful. But you know, it still comes down <laughs> to say, about the money. Yeah, that's about, about money. the money. Some ways it's about way. money. It's about the money. If you don't if have I'd the money, if I had the money, oh. I'd have started a war here yep, in Montgomery yep, County. Yep. You would have probably gotten <laughs> yeah. an endorsement from the Oregonians yeah. if you had yeah. the money. Yeah. You got to have enough money, Don. Yeah. They, they looked down at me when yeah, I yeah, was yeah, interviewed yeah, by them. Was. How much money have you got? That's the first thing. But always had. remember, you yeah. did file the run for office. I did. And during that particular time, you acted as a sheriff. I was the sheriff. So you were very successful. You <laughs> yeah. won. Yeah. Okay. You just you spent a, a specific amount of time. Yeah. If you had more money, you'd had more time. That's right. That's the way I look at it. I mean, I've yeah. I've run for office, and and in this town. My, with, with the kind of an attitude and background that I have as a as a marine and straightforward aspect of it, I won't be able to get over a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. see? 
Now, if Don drops one of those billion dollars on me, I wouldn't have a problem, right? right. We, we'd have a problem. We, we'd, we'd solve this situation overnight, okay? Okay, good. Then. Well, look, we got about another, we got, probably got about another two minutes here. Uh, let's see. The, the well, last locally, thing. I'm going to support Fred Stewart because yeah. I think Fred Stewart can make yeah. a difference in, in, in what's going on in the city. I think that he needs to oust uh, Novik, mm -hmm. who I think is short-sighted in a lot of aspects. Uh, he wants to do things that Portland doesn't want done. He yep. wants to raise taxes for fix the streets. He wants to put parking meters where nobody mm -hmm. wants them. Mm -hmm. He wants Portland. more density yeah. in housing. He yeah. wants yeah. the town to look like Shanghai. Well, you may right. have to ditto that with Singapore. Charlie Hill, too, the mayor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, hopefully Wheeler will come over here and run for mayor and put... You know, Charles, Charles is a good folks aspect of it, but yeah. the fact of the matter is, this is not where, where we are right now. We got uh, problem with density mm -hmm. aspect of it. Right. Yeah. All these high rise, no, right. no no respect for family, the gentrification, if you yeah. will, yeah. of the black community. There are a lot yeah. of people in Portland are really upset about all of these high rises because it's destroying the character of Southeast oh. Portland neighborhoods oh, well, well, and hey. Northeast Portland oh, neighborhoods. Oh, big time, yeah. big time. It's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding he dedicated some 20 million bucks and. And then figure well. Then now the people are just yeah. trying to fight for that little money aspect. Yeah. It lays out the criteria, yeah. and there's no money. It's about the families. It's mm -hmm. about the. It's about community. Yeah. You know, it's about the kids. Yeah. It's about education. Yeah. Should be at the front of the line. And I'm talking yeah. about the other politicians too. Yeah. Earl Blumenau I was another yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. This is his area. <clears throat> He's, he's not being responsible. Yeah. We got to get politics out of our situation, folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got we still have a beautiful area. Mm -hmm. Got me? Yeah. We got Washington on one side. We got California on the other side. Mm -hmm. And trust me, we're the last of the Mohegans as far as the land and, mm -hmm. and livability. And, and we got the water. And water. And water. We got the water. We got the water. And if we don't, if we aren't careful, careful, <laughs> we're gonna have a pipe coming all the way from here and just suck it all out of the that's deal. Right. And I don't like that because I'm right. here. That's why I may have to run, Don. Right. Don, we may have to get back to the that, table. We might have. To. We may have to get back to the table, folks. Remember that, okay? All right. Look like we got about another minute, right? Am I right? Raise your hand if I'm right. Okay, Dave, we got about another minute. That's what he says. Another minute. Well, look, like I said, pay attention to the elections. Very important. Yeah. And uh, pay attention to what's around you. Very, very important. Get involved. Uh, remember the kids. Remember our youth, if you will. Yeah. Re remember our seniors, if you will. Remember our veterans, you know, because right up front, veterans are a big hit right now. I still got my head on aspect of it. Go out and get your benefits. And remember, pick up your pick up this piece, because this is Portland Police. We got one right here, a live one. May, in fact, he may be, I may have to run for mayor, and he, he's going to be my, my chief, my police chief. Don't scare people uh, now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Solve this problem overnight, okay? Hmm. And, uh, you know, so... So the bottom line is, it, no, it's it really a good read. I mean, I, I like it. It's a good read. Uh, it's very simple. But the fact of the matter is, we got to be aware now. Yeah. Very much involved. I realize a lot, some of you have made you some monies and this, that, and the other, but we need you to get more involved. Get more involved. we got to make sure we take care of our environment. Mm -hmm. But with that, I want to thank you very, very much, both of you. I think it's been great. Thank you. you it's gonna, always fun being here, Bruce. Is, yes. is, you been having a good time? Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have Fred on next time around. Maybe I'll have Novak here or something of that nature. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's talking about the issues. I'm not personally attacking anyone. Right. It's the issues that yeah. I'm attacking. Yeah. And we need people that will respond to our concerns at the issues that we have here. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. And with that, folks, I guess I'm going to give it up to you. All right, Dave? Am I okay on that, Dave? All right? I think we're fine. Look, have a good one. I'll see you later. Take care. Enjoy yourself.